Hey everybody, it's Sam. I hope you're having a great day today. I am really having a good day myself. I just wanted to uh, give you a little bit of an update today on my um, rental house that I did the eviction on a few months ago. The eviction was in February of this year and it is now July. And so I have been working on this house trying to make some updates and get it so that it looks nice again for new renters to come in and rent the house so that it can become income producing property once again. So um, if you're new to my channel, my name is Sam and the channel's name is Retire Inspired. And my channel is about retirement and my specifically my retirement experience. So in this channel, I talk about retirement, I talk about things that I am doing in retirement, and I'm also talking about some of the ways that I generate income in retirement outside of my regular pension, which I received from my job that I retired from back in January. So I am six months into my retirement now, and I am uh, just really having a blast. It's a good time. And for everyone who is getting ready to retire, I want to let you know it is a great thing. Retirement is everything it is said to be, everything that it is cracked up to be. I have thoroughly enjoyed my retirement so far, and I expect to be enjoying my retirement for many more years to come. So, without further ado, let's go into the house and give you a little bit of update on what I have done to make it ready to be rented again. Now, in my last video, I said that there was, it was kind of like a disaster because the house was in pretty bad shape when I came and uh, took it back over. So let's take a look at it now and see how it looks. All right, so this is the main entryway. But it's got this really nice tile that was put in by the previous owners. <clears throat> and there was carpet all throughout the house when I bought it. Since I have bought it, I have, uh, I had the carpet in here, but as you remember from the video, the, it was in very bad condition. So what I did was, I told you in my previous video that I was considering putting down laminate flooring, uh, you know, vinyl plank flooring, but I decided against that because I just decided that it was not going to be as nice as if I were to just take the original wood floors, sand them down, and redo them, which is what I did. So this is uh, showing you how these floors look now. They really look good. I have already come in and we have repainted these rooms so we have new paint on the walls and the uh, the flooring looks really good now one thing that I'm still going to have to do I've rehung these closet doors because I had to take them down when I was doing the the floors so they do the floors look really good I was very pleased with how they turned out and then the bathroom you can see the, the fan is kind of noisy. I'm probably going to have to replace that fan. It's making a lot of noise. But I am going to replace this, this light fixture and I'm going to see what I can do about this sink. You see there's rust in the sink. Um, I don't know if it's, if it's still, if it's leaking underneath or what, but the rest of the bathroom is in very good condition. It's, this is a half bath. And so this, this bathroom is in very good condition with the exception of this sink, which I'm going to get uh, fixed or fix it somehow. I'm not sure. But let's walk around and look at the other bedrooms. Again, this floor turned out beautiful. I was really pleased with how the floor came out. We also painted in this room. I, I made sure and painted... Uh, 
around the windows with new paint. So the paint is, is all new around the windows, the walls, and the floors have been redone. Got the door, the doors to the closet rehung. Now the one thing I'm going to have to do in here is there's still a bunch of gunk on the ceiling fan, so we're just going to have to clean that off and make it look clean again. And so it doesn't have all that gunk on there. And also, we'll need to repaint the ceiling as well. So that's all we have to do in this room is just repaint that ceiling and clean off that ceiling fan. And as you walk into the hallway, into the middle bedroom, there's still some drop cloth in here from where we painted. But uh, again, the floors just look beautiful. I was really happy with how these floors turned out. Very satisfied and just really thinking, think, I think it did a, did a really good job. Also, I put in a new ceiling fan in this bedroom. So this is a brand new ceiling fan that I installed myself. If you recall, the ceiling fan that was in here was in pretty bad condition. So I took that one out. Also rehung re these closet doors. So each bedroom has nice closets. Really like the closet space in these bedrooms. <coughs> and also, one other thing that we did is we installed three prong plugs where before we just had the two prong plugs. See, there's three prong plugs in each of these receptacles now, but before we only had the two prong plugs. Because it was an older house, they didn't put uh, the three-prong plugs in the houses when they built them back in the early 60s. So this is the bathroom. It's still in the condition it was in the last time I showed it. I need to paint these cabinets. I need to clean this tub, get it real clean. It still has a bunch of dirt and stuff from the previous tenants, including their nasty body here. <laughs> um, but the sink is in good condition maybe just needs a little cleaning to get that rust removed and I need to put this door back on the sink so that it will uh, look nice again so as we walk into the rest of the house uh, we, get, we come into the I guess this is like a formal living room and uh, dining room area still has the drop cloth but we got the formal living room and the dining room area here and you can see the floor I put a table in here so that uh, I would have a place to sit and maybe drink coffee or what have you when I was working just to take a break but this table came out of Ethel the van and I also put up a, a new ceiling fan in this room as well. So that's a new ceiling fan. We've got these walls painted. And the only thing we need to do is just put the, uh, I got to paint the trim of the windows. And then we got to put the uh, covers of the light sockets back on so that it will have that finished look. So we walk into here and we go into the kitchen area. Now the kitchen has probably had the biggest transformation of any area. Um, I put in a new ceiling fan here in the kitchen. If you recall in my video that I did, the uh, ceiling fan that was here in the kitchen was broken. It had a blade completely missing from it. And so there's some cabinets here that they just need to be cleaned up and possibly repainted. But uh, these are a nice little set of cabinets. And below that is where the, the washer and dryer will go. And there's a shelf up here in the top. And as you move down, there's a little desk area. Um, I guess when they had the telephones, the home phones, there was a telephone there. And the person probably used this little desk area to take notes or what have you. And so this is the pantry that I made. I built this 100% by myself. 
no experience in building pantries, but I think it turned out really nice. I got this wainscoting um, from my shed. Yeah, I already had the wainscoting, and I thought I would just use what I already had on hand. So I put this wainscoting on top of, I, I just built a frame, and you can see in here where I built the frame of the cabinet or the pantry right next right on the ceiling and then put the shelving in and these shelves are really sturdy this is the three-quarter plywood but this one is a half inch so it's not quite as sturdy so what I ended up doing I put a beam underneath it to kind of sturdy it and it and it works really good it holds it real well and then I just got this sliding door at Home Depot and it all comes together really nice and works really well. This is the stove that I had put in because the old stove, if you recall, was a white stove and it just did not work good. So I went to Habitat for Humanity and I got this General Electric stove and I had it put in and you can see that there's notches on the side of this um, pantry. I had to cut those notches or I had to make those notches in order for this door of the stove to open and close so but it worked it turned out okay and I was able to frame around the stove as well and I did pretty good I think matching this paint to the cabinet color as close as I could so these are the original cabinets and they look really good still so they'll just need to be washed down we'll paint these walls the nice granite countertops are still here and I had to replace this stove and I, I did I replaced this stove completely let me see if I can turn this light on so you can see it a little bit better but this is a new glass countertop stove that I inst had installed I did not install it myself because I am not a an electrician and I don't know how to do those things <laughs> so but <clears throat> it did, already had this nice um, stainless steel vent cover and this back splash area was uh, stainless steel so it, it was easy to clean up and still looks very nice and uh, so also if you remember the dishwasher was full of some black moldy fluids that were in there but I have uh, run the dishwasher a few times and it cleaned it out and it's clean now as it will ever be here's the sink and I still have my paint brushes in there from when I was painting and underneath are the cabinets and there's some more cabinets there and cabinets there and then I these these are broken see there's a, a corner missing out from these blinds so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these blinds down completely and I'm just going to replace them with uh, regular blinds for this window up here is a pot rack this was this pot rack was in the house when I bought it so we're just going to keep it there and anybody who wants to hang pots from it can. That's the original light fixture. And if you recall, the refrigerator was all busted out. It had all the uh, shelves busted on it. I went to the same place where I got the stove, the Habitat for Humanity, and I got this refrigerator. I think I paid $50 for the stove and I paid $100 for the refrigerator. So all in, about $150 for the refrigerator and the stove and this refrigerator is in really good condition and it cools real well the freezer area works just fine if you recall this is the big the the large room it has the vaulted ceilings that I've mentioned before and the ceiling fans when I was cutting the grass out there I busted this uh, door the glass in this door and it just busted into a million pieces so I had to call a glass company and they came out and fitted another piece of glass on here but the piece of glass that they had was not the correct size so now they're going to have to go back and recut another piece of glass and put it in here so temporarily they put the old piece of the, they put the piece of glass that they brought to put in and it it fits in there but it doesn't fit right so they're going to make that other piece of glass and get it ready to be installed as soon as possible so this is my work area where I was building my uh, cabinets. This is where I built all of the uh, pantry work that you saw. 
cut it all with this miter saw. It works really well. I bought this about <laughs> 15, 20 years ago. Um, actually, it was over 20 years ago. I was doing work on another house that I had, and I was uh, I was working on some some molding, and so I just bought this to do that molding, and I have had it ever since, and it still works really good. And I just took these saw horses and and put a couple of two by fours on them, and then used that as a table, and it works really nice. So. You know, it's been a lot of fun working on this house and getting it ready to rent again, but it's also been a lot of work. And uh, I think it's, if I had to do over it again, I probably would have just hired somebody to do it because if you think about the time that it takes to, uh, to do all this work and, and get it rented again, you know, you're looking at, several months that uh, the house is not producing any rental income. So I would have probably been better off just to have spent the money ahead, you know, straightforward and had it done by a professional and then I would probably already have it rented by now. So let's go outside. I never did really show you the outside of this property and I want to give you the full tour of the property because it is actually a really nice house. There are three storage areas on this property. The first storage area is this room that is actually attached to the house. It's, it's covered by this covering right here, but this room is just off of the house and I think it was built with the house originally when the house was built and it is a uh, I'll turn the light on here so you can see it a little bit better. But it's just a small room and it's got shelving here. The previous owner, I think, used it as a work room, uh, as a workhouse, you know, just kind of did his uh, his things in here. A little bit drab because of the dark uh, plywood walls. Maybe I'll throw some white paint on that and see if that makes it look any better. But here is my scrap wood that I had left over. <laughs> I need to pick that up and clean it up. This is where I was building the uh, pantry. And so that's the wainscoting that I had left over from building the pantry. I don't know if I want to keep that for scrap or if I want to, you know, use it on another project or what. But here is the other, one of the other storage buildings. And then this is the other storage building. So there's three storage areas. This one here, I'm going to maintain access to this while it's rented to uh, I, I already do have a renter um, that's going to be moving in August 1st so I already have that renter and all I got to do is get it ready and get it rented but I just use this storage building to kind of store some stuff and uh, if you recall this refrigerator that was tore up it's still here and it's still tore up Maybe I'll clean it out and just use it to store cold beverages in. But, you know, the refrigerator part actually still works, so I want to keep that. And, of course, you remember Ethel. Ethel and I had some adventures, and we'll, we'll do a little bit extra tour of Ethel after I get done showing you the rest of the property. But this is the other storage building that came with the house, and this storage building is a pretty decent size. I don't know the exact size, but, but both of these storage buildings, this one here and this one here, are the same size. Uh, when I bought this house, most of this stuff was already in the storage building, and I just offered the previous owner, if they would just leave the stuff in the storage building, I would give them a couple thousand dollars extra for the house, and they were happy to do that because that was less stuff that they had to move now a couple of items like this saw here are items that I brought and put in here. Like this, these, light, these lights here, I brought in and put them in here. That bag right there is uh, some scuba equipment that I brought in. But stuff like this um, toolbox here, and it does have tools in it. If you look inside the drawers, it doesn't have a whole, whole lot of tools, but it does have tools in it in these drawers and this 
toolbox here is a Craftsman toolbox as well, and then I brought this toolbox in too. There is an air conditioning unit in this uh, storage building, so if I wanted to come out here and do some work or something like that, I could turn the air conditioning unit on. And I just like having access to this, excuse me, I like having access to this building because it, it gives me more space for storage and some of my tools and stuff that I can keep out here. So that's a, that's the two storage build, or actually the three storage areas. And then here is the outside of the house. You can see that it is a brick house, really nice. This is the addition here. And it has a, uh, I don't know if I can zoom up a little bit, but uh, you can see the chimney. It, I think it is a working fireplace, but it right, not, right now it currently has gas hooked up to it. So there's a nice little patio area out here where someone could set up some chairs and just enjoy the uh, outside air and just sit out here and relax. And one thing I liked about this house when I bought it, it already had a fairly new AC unit. So here's the AC unit, and it, let's see what brand this is. This is a carrier, and carriers are generally pretty good. So that AC unit was in the house already here when I bought this house. And I did buy this house, let's see, I want to say 2018 is when I bought it. And I know it's hard to believe, but I only paid $40,000 for this house, which I think was a steal of a deal, if you ask me. So. The last thing I'm going to do before I close out this video is I'm going to show you the van and kind of give you an idea of how it's looking now. So here's Ethel, and Ethel hasn't been hasn't been used a whole lot. We've been using her for yard sales and that sort of thing, but I haven't taken any major trips with Ethel in a little while, so. Of course, you got to have some blue dev because this is a diesel, and you have to put blue dev in it, which is something that I had to learn. So, I still have my bed in here, my mattress with my cot, and it's a little disheveled back here. I've got my uh, porta, porta john, my porta potty, and still have these shelves here. Now, what I plan on doing is I'm going to build this out a little bit more before I take my next trip in the fall. I do plan on taking another trip in the fall. But what I want to do is I want to remove the shelving, the rest of this shelving, and I want to uh, I want to put in like a, some cabinets and make it look kind of like a kitchen in this area right here. And I want to take this shelving out here so I can put a permanent kind of bed across the back side. I think it's long enough. I'm it's around 5'11 and a half, so I think it's wide enough for me to put a bed that I can completely lay down in and get some get a good night's rest. There is the TV. Unfortunately, this TV got caught in the doorway and you can see it's cracked in the corner here. So I'm going to have to remove this TV. I'm not sure if I'm going to put another TV back in its place. I don't know if I will or not. But these are all the places that I went in January. I went through Mississippi, Louisiana, Texas, Arizona, New Mexico, California, and then also went to the Grand Canyon and, and was on the historic Route 66. And of course you saw my video where I went to fabulous Las Vegas and I saw the Pawn Stars store. I also went to Chum Lee's candy uh, store right across the street. And then I uh, went to Florida a few months back after that and got a, a magnet for Florida. And here is the front of the van. I have added a backup camera right here. And I'll show you that in just a second. But this has been a very good van so far. And I've got it parked up underneath this cover that was at this house. So I keep it here at this house, but, and it keeps it protected. Also, this is the camera in the back. It is uh, mounted with a magnet. 
so I'm thinking this will be a pretty good camera to have. I've used it several times. It, it's a, it works really good as a backup camera, and it is, I'm going to see if I can get this to show the top, but it is a uh, solar-powered camera, and it, there are no wires, so it's completely wireless and uh, makes it really good not to have those wires because when I was trying to install a camera myself, I ended up messing up the wiring inside and they had to fix that when I took it to the shop. But you see I've got this <coughs> this uh, ladder rack here on both sides. There's actually two ladder racks, this one and this one here. And uh, and they're designed for, you know, holding ladders because this was a work truck. It, it was a Cox cable van. And what I want to do is, see I've got a ladder up here on top of it right now, but I would like to do, what I would like to do is I would like to figure out a way that I can temporarily mount some solar panels to these roof racks um, and just have them mounted when I'm on my trips so that I can have a uh, solar power generator to, uh, to give me power when I'm on the road. So that's, that's my plan is to get a, so you can still see the Cox Cable logo on the side of it and it is a diesel powered vehicle. I really do enjoy this Sprint van. Uh, there's just a couple of things that the uh, people who sold it to me should have disclosed. I think that they spray painted the hood because a lot of this paint has been chipping off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a sander and I'm gonna sand this down and I'm gonna get some spray paint and spray paint it again and see if it'll stay this time. I just really don't like the way that looks. It just came off completely. But the top here, there is, there's a spotlight that works. It, uh, it's nice to have a spotlight, not that I would ever really have a need for it. And also this, this yellow um, caution light here for when, when they were working on in areas and they just wanted to make people aware that they were around. That works as well. And when you turn that on, it also causes these tail lights to blink. So that's a tour of Ethel, the van. I am looking forward to taking more trips on Ethel, and I'm also looking forward to finishing up this house and getting it ready to rent again so that it can be an income producing property. I like it when I can have income producing properties that don't require a whole lot of maintenance. This is one of those uh, situations where this house just does not require a whole lot of maintenance. So I can put the tenant in there and you know if anything happens, the toilet gets topped up, sink gets topped up, if there's any issues, what, it, what I have a people that I call. I have plumbers, electricians, heat and air people and I just give them a call and they come and take care of it. We, and it's not always cheap but that is something that I have to you know plan for when I rent a house. So I hope you enjoyed the video today. I had a good time making this video and I want you to know that this is just one of the things that you can do in retirement if you plan ahead. Now I didn't spend a whole lot of money on this house. I only spent, like I said, $40,000 to buy it and when I bought it, it was actually move-in ready and I think I got a really steal of a deal to be honest with you. I think it was probably the best deal on a house. Now I bought houses for cheaper. I bought a house for, I bought two of my houses for $17,000 each. So I mean that's really cheap and they're you know worth considerably more than that now. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and close out this video for now but I wanted to give you a little bit of an update on this rental house and let you know it's getting ready to be reopened so that I can start making revenue on it again. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure and give it a like and a thumbs up. And also hit that notification bell so that you'll be notified whenever I put up a video. And be sure and join me on the next video. So for now, I will talk with you later and I will see you next time. Bye-bye. Love you guys. Have a great one.